Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to part two of my Low Man series. In this week's video, I'm gonna show you how to two-man Galran in the Crown of Sorrows. All right, now when it comes to setup, you have two clear choices. You can either go two Warlocks or one Titan and one Warlock. Go with what you want and what your partner feel more comfortable with, but I'll give you some pros for each. Now when you have two Warlocks, you're gonna want both running Well of Radiance. This makes the majority of the fight much safer, basically everything but damage face. This is because you have an extra Well of Radiance to use when the second Deception spawns. During this wave, you'll have an option to use your second Well to help clear adds from a safe spot, which can in turn make the encounter much more consistent. Now if you feel like you'd rather run a 1-in-1 one -one setup with a Titan and a Warlock, then your damage towards Galarant is going to get the boost. You're basically swapping out 25% for 35% damage when you replace a well with a bubble. And if you're like me and just play better in your Titan, then go with that. With near perfect optimization, you can two phase with the bubble, but if your loadouts aren't perfect, then this will give you a safe three phase, which is all the phases you have to work with. If you're running two warlocks, you'll have to make sure your damage phases are pretty clean as there is less breathing room. Since the raid involves Hive and is on the Leviathan, I highly recommend running at the very least Hive Barrier, but if you have the armor pieces for it, here's my list for ones to prioritize. Hive Barrier, Hive Armaments, Energized, and Emperor's Blaze slash Bounce, and then to a lesser extent, Striking Hand, Giving Hand, and Hive Invigoration. They can be useful, but situational at best. Only use these if you can't use the first four for any reason. As for regular mods, try and have both Sniper and Grenade Launcher Finders, Reserves, and Scavengers to maximize your ammo during the fight. Prioritize the mods previously mentioned, but be sure to run some resistance mods if you can, so things like Minor, Major Resist, Boss Resist, Elemental Resist, etc. You can see here the loadout I set up for both Titan and Warlock for some guidelines. Weapons you should bring as of the making of this video should be an aggressive 72 RPM or an adaptive 90 RPM kinetic sniper with perks like triple tap, fourth times the charm, high impact reserves, or rapid hit. Recluse post nerf should still be the play here, but I'll update the loadout in the description if I need to. If you don't have Recluse, just use another energy SMG. Your heavy should be Anarchy. I'd say it'd be better to try and get it before even attempting this. It's that good. Uh, an alternative loadout would essentially need to be Izanagi's Burden with Recluse and an auto-loading holster spike grenade launcher. And no, not Wendigo. You won't have enough orbs to make it better than the spike grenades. So here, just to showcase what the um, exotic swapping is for Warlock. You don't need to do this, but if you want to, um, you may as well, right? You're gonna get the benefit of Luna Factions while still getting your super back from Phoenix. Um, so what you do here is right as you're in the animation of planting the well, just go to your inventory screen, swap off of Phoenix, swap to Luna Factions, and then keep killing. And then if you can, uh, after you've done most of your stuff, switch back. If you can't, then just keep running Luna Factions for the rest of the fight um, because you're going to use it for damage phase. The format of the encounter is pretty simple. Uh, really all you're doing is rotating from point to point to point. Uh, what makes this tricky is the task of managing everything that's going on. I'll use our third phase here to explain the fight as we go. Alright, we just said damage at void so we pick up some ammo and swap our buffs it isn't crucial to keep the buff so if you don't have time to wait have your partner shoot to strip your buff and have them pick it up uh, when it spawns we head to top to reset and kill the first wave of adds the crystal in this case spawns at top so we are going to play ahead of it and our rotation then goes to red and it's just a clockwise pattern from now So we kill some stuff, pop the crystal, and then now is our time to swap the buffs at the totem between red and purple. That's the one along our rotation. Another thing to note is how I use my partner's rift. Benevolent Dawn is a very strong perk 
on the well tree. So by me going in it, it helps keep me safe while also giving him his abilities back. It's a win-win. So we just popped crystal and now's our time to go middle with the well. Try and place it towards the top area of the map, kind of in the center that I was mentioning. Um, if you can't, it's no big deal. Um, and then this is where the warlock does the exotic swap. So if you're on console, don't worry about it. Just stick on Phoenix. But I showed it earlier. Um, this is where you do the yeah, Luna faction and swap. Um, so we're doing all our ad clearing. It's a buff person. I look out for knights and thrall. The uh, non-buff person looks out for the ogres. Basically, once we're both ready, enough ad clearing, we head top and pop the crystal, and then we do mans as well, or the uh, deception. Um, it's good here to have one person consistently grab the buff every time. So in my case, I always did hands, slap my partner, always grab the buff. It just keeps things simple. Um, so now we're still just doing our rotation. He picked up buffs, so now we're moving Clockwise, we go to red. We pop crystal right before we do the deception. It's another nice thing about, uh, well, uh, you've got a healing nade. So if you need to make it safer, you can either put a rift or the healing nade right on top of the deception as you go in to punch them. Now you can punch or shoot. Um, I typically shoot. My teammate normally punches. really doesn't matter. Um, Another thing to note here, if you're running your other Warlock, uh, after popping this crystal here, uh, you would go back to middle to do, uh, you'd play to place your second well. So we're kind of in a grace period here where we just did a crystal, so we have a little bit of time, we do some ad clearing, we know where the next dude is going to spawn, so we just go up, do crystal, head right back to where it was going to be. Um, this is where another thing, good to note, um, this part here, uh, my teammate was actually getting low on time, so he asked on the way to switch, right? So it's very important to keep comms with your teammate, let them know what, what your status is, you know, how, how you're doing with whatever, you know, the important things. So he needs to swap, I'm there, like we're always buddy buddy next to each other. So we did crystal top, so next rotation would be red. Um, and then after getting that third, that final crystal, uh, now we're doing hands. So nice thing about the sniper, why I recommend a 90 or a 72 RPM is that it will one hit the hands. Um, so pop hands on your side. So divvy it up between, like I'm doing red, slaps doing left or void. Shoot both hands shoot head and then help on top and what you want to do is make sure that you leave the head on the top guy that way he can repop so you can actually do the crystal sometimes you won't have time yep. there we go. Oh, okay. all right so now we're on damage phase it's fairly simple um, self-explanatory right bubble pops if you can put the well down um, right after doing first damage phase kind of when the second thrall will spawn um, maximizes your damage output uh, because normally you won't have that act that well won't last uh, for the third one in this case we didn't need it but have the one have one person do hands the other person with the buff do the ad clearing um, yeah. and then just you know if, if you need to with anarchy one thing you can do um, shoot the lower leg a little twice so put one on each leg or the, on the same leg really low and then put another on its head um, that way you have two that are connected doing damage and one not connected doing damage. Uh, if you have all three connected, they'll only do the damage of two. So you can do a little more damage that way, but you'll have to reload, so it's a little bit of a sacrifice. I'm not sure which one is optimally better. Um, it really doesn't matter. I would go with what you want. If you feel like reloading, then I mean, like I went for three uh, most times, so that's what I did. Um, if not, then, you know, just go with two. That you can't go wrong with either way um, but going back to just before damage um, I picked the third phase for this reason I thought it, the damage was top so it's important there to not have that sort of mental ups you can totally recover so it's not it's not like a wipe just because I did that and I went to the far totem to swap doesn't mean it was a wipe 
if you can, like I said, try to avoid that, keep that, you know, focus. Um, cause it did, l we did lose a little bit of damage time. Didn't really matter. We were on the third phase. We already had quite a bit of damage dealt. Um, but it's something to note that try to do the, try to do your last swap right before you go to do damage next to. I want to cover hands one more time to make it as clear as possible. This won't matter what side you are on, they both do the same thing. So you'll shoot both hands and the head on your side. Then take out only the hands on top. This will give you time to go to and pop the crystal. When he reactivates, shoot both the hands and the head. Now you can go swap your buff and start the damage phase. Now if you're perfect you can two phase. We are far from it on both our first and third damage phase. However, our second one is what I nearly call perfect. So I'm going to let that entire phase run right now so you have a sense of what a real run is like. We cleared top and pop crystal on red just to catch you up. Hopefully this was helpful and you can get your first two man clear of Garan or perhaps optimize your strats. Uh, next week will be a two man guide for Insurrection Prime. So I hope to see you then, and thank you for watching. Just off to our left. Okay. One thing that snipers are a lot nicer at is killing the knights at range. Like, holy crap. And the hands. Oh yeah, for sure hands too, just one hitting him. Okay. Yeah, you're good. I don't have wall back yet, so I'm gonna okay. delay it. Got me a bubble? Uh, yeah. Where are these guys? Oh, there's a knight. Okay, let's go. I'm right behind you. Alright, swap on Void here. We got a really kind of whack rotation. That purple. I'm gonna wait for her hand. I don't want to oh, slam. My yeah. bad. Oh, it's okay. Fine. So, yeah. Go. Hey, yeah. yeah, it worked. It worked. So, I'm, I'm cool with that. But I guess hiding. Oh, the ogre's on one. I forgot. Oh, he regen. Let's go up top for this one. Okay. Alright, got him. Don't punch this guy yet. Okay. Just kill odds. Holy. Oh. I'm stopping gear in this route. It's up top. Oh, of course he runs. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Thank you. Uh, is crystal spawn or am I? 
No, oh, yeah. Mine is okay. No, this is yeah. I was waiting for it too. Two I was left. To I mean, okay. two right. Right. Come around. I got both. Stop on the way. <clears throat> that was a little slow. My bad. I have the special right here. Sure. What? I shot the hand with a sniper. How did it? Okay, I got that hand. It's up on the right. That's fucking weird. I, I shot the hand over here. with a sniper, but. 